and then I was kind of just alone in this room and I looked around and I just started crying. Hey guys, it's me again and I have now been in Japan for just over a year, which is so crazy because that went by like, like so quick. I can't even believe that. Like, oh my God. Anyway, so you know that feature that Facebook has where it shows you like what you were saying a year ago and like what was happening like two years ago that you did this, right? I've been seeing a lot of those lately and it's bringing back so many memories. So today I'm going to be basically taking a trip down memory lane. Do people still say that? Or is, did people ever say that? Is that just a thing people said in films? I'm gonna talk first of all about when I first flew out and arrived and what it was like on like the, the very very first day and then I also want to talk a bit about like the first week or so and how things progress and some tips for if you move to Japan. Kind of, a little bit, not, not that many tips, but like a bit. When I actually left for Japan, it kind of felt so real because, you know, I'd been working for it for like three years. I couldn't believe it was actually happening. It just didn't feel like it was, you know, this thing that I'd anticipated for so many years. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just couldn't really believe it was happening. And then when I actually arrived in Japan, it was so hectic, like trying to find everything. So I landed at around like one o'clock in the afternoon and then I had to go to like the immigration place and get my residence card sorted. And then there's a post office inside the airport that I had to find because I'd rented a SIM card basically, which you should actually do that. I do recommend that you get a rental SIM card. Just, I think you can just look up rental SIM. Japan. What it is, is it's this little SIM card where you have unlimited data and it's very, very helpful. I think without that, I would never have found the station I need to get to. I'm gonna get some tea. Creamy. I remember it being very, very hot in Japan, which really surprised me because, you know, in the UK and in, in a lot of European countries around September, it starts to get cold. But in Japan, it was still like, between 25 and 30 degrees, which was mental for me. And today, actually, it's 33 degrees and it's October. After that, I had to get on a bus which went to Shinjuku. If you have been to Tokyo, you know that Shinjuku can be very, very overwhelming. It was manic. And I had these two huge suitcases and they were so heavy. And I also had a bag on my back which had so many things in it, like my laptop and all kinds of stuff. I was just really like, I don't even know how I did that. I lived on the Seiba Shinjuku line. Now, if you know Shinjuku, you know that Shinjuku station is like here, and then Seiba Shinjuku station is like here. Like, they're not in the same place. And I didn't even know where Shinjuku station was. Like, I didn't know anything. I'd never been to Japan before. And I got off the bus, and I remember just like looking around me. I was like, like, oh my god, like, geez, I actually did that. Like, I was overwhelmed. And at the same time, I was kind of like, Oh my god, I have to go to my share house because I was gonna get my key for my share house so there was someone waiting for me at a certain time. There are so many people in Shinjuku. Like, it's manic. It's actually, Shinjuku station is the busiest station in the whole world, I think. To give you, like, an idea of what I was going through. And at the same time, I remember very specifically that, first of all, I had no idea where I was going. I was using my phone with the data and stuff, but it's so difficult when you don't understand, like, the train layout and the station. Like, I didn't understand anything, right? I had no idea what I was doing. And then I thought I found the right way, which I had. Something I noticed, which I never would have noticed if I didn't have the suitcases, is the ground was really, like, ridgy. And I was really dragging the suitcases. Oh my gosh, I just... I was in so much pain. Miraculously, after like half an hour in the sun with giant suitcases, I, I know I keep stressing the giant suitcases, but I cannot stress, like I can't, it, I can't begin to explain how much I was struggling with these suitcases. Like, it was manic. So I arrive at Shinju Seiba Shinjuku station, and the first thing I remember is that to get to the station, you have to go up like all these stairs, and I was there with my suitcases, just like looking at them. But then this Japanese person comes up to me and he like takes up one at a time for me and I was just there like, really? For me? And I was probably like super stinky and gross from the flight so I'm like, like honestly, thank you. Like really, that, that saved me. I feel like if I tried to do that myself I would have actually just fallen down the stairs. Like, I, it was... 
the kindest thing anyone has ever done for me. No, I'm being dramatic, but it was actually really, really nice. I really appreciated that. Then I went up the stairs and I had to fix myself like a little subway card. We call it a PASMO. And the station staff was really helpful about that. So actually, all things considered, I got a lot of help from the people around me, which definitely saved me. Then I was waiting on the train platform. And once I was certain that I was actually waiting for the right train and in the right place, I just got really calm and the, the sun was really beautiful while it was like shining down on the station and it wasn't rush hour or anything so the train was really calm and I was just kind of like taking it in like yeah I moved to Japan Woo! I felt so relieved in a way then I arrived at the train station that I was supposed to go to and my house manager met me he was walking me from the station and kind of just asking me a few questions and then he asked how old I was and I said I was 19 he was like huh I thought you were 30 and that's when I was like great I'm ugly in Japan no, that actually like really panicked me because I was like, oh my gosh, everyone's going to think I'm really old. But I haven't had a situation like that since, but I was really upset by it. So I arrive at my room as the sun sets and the room was actually quite nice, that room. It was really wide. I wonder if I can find a picture of the actual room. It was really wide and it had really good storage space and it had really nice windows. Like it was, it was a good room. I wasn't complaining about the room. I signed my papers and the house manager left and then I was kind of just alone in this room and I looked around and I just started crying like bawling my eyes out I don't know what it was it's not like I was sad I think I was just really overwhelmed and I was like well fuck I actually did that I'm actually like all alone in Japan now at the same time it was kind of peaceful it, I don't know it was just like I was feeling a lot of stuff and I remember I just wanted to go down and take a bath so that's what I did. The bathtub in the first house was probably the nicest bathtub I've had in Japan and I took my first bath and it was really relaxing and I was just, I don't know, I was really overwhelmed. <gasps> and then I realised that I didn't have any towels. If you move to Japan, bring towels. You know, it's one of those things that just like, it doesn't cross your mind. I think I dried myself with clothes which is just sad. And then I remember my hairdryer didn't work in Japan because of the voltage difference. Oh my god, that was such a nightmare, I forgot about that. And then I realized that I didn't have a mirror. So the next day I, I really struggled to put on my makeup. So it became like this big thing, like I don't have anything. <laughs> I think it was just my share house at that time that didn't have mirrors because every other share house I've been to since has had mirrors. I think it was really strange because it's a women's only share house, right? It's strange that none of the bathrooms, like nothing, had a mirror. As far as how the share house itself was, it was, my room was lovely and the area was quite cute and nice. I liked walking around there, but it was right next to an all boys high school, which was a nightmare because if you live in Japan or if you know Japan at all, you'd know that school starts at like 8 o'clock in the morning and then they don't go home until like 6 o'clock in the evening and they were so loud and I was not only next to the school but I was next to like the sports courtyard thing so they were constantly like screaming all day and then that week was their like bunker festival, like culture festival and they built a stage just outside my window like I could watch them and they um, they started dancing to I think Love Live and they were practicing like so much and then at the end they all put on like these Love Live costumes and started like dancing and uh, there were times where I was like I'm into this like I'm glad you guys are having so much fun with your little Love Live costumes and dancing and singing and then there were times where I was like oh my god this has been going on for like hours and then have like someone practicing the saxophone and I don't know it was just like it was so noisy I was actually so overwhelmed by how noisy it was and on top of that my roommate next door was always blasting music at night so I was really struggling with things like sleep because at night my roommate was being really really noisy with like really loud rock music and then during the day the schoolboys were being really noisy with their like bunker festival and their tennis and their basketball like they were so loud I remember when I first arrived I was really overwhelmed because I didn't have any friends which I didn't think I would be upset by I am a naturally introverted person so I need a lot of alone time and I like spending time alone but what I realized was 
And I'd heard it before, but I'd, I'd never like taken it in before. I'd never like lived it. But there is a big difference between being lonely and being alone. Like being alone by choice and being alone because there is literally no one that you know in a country is crazy. If you guys remember my post at the time, I literally posted like, hi, if you live in Japan, please be my friend, please. I don't know, it was just so overwhelming. And then I remember, a few days after I'd moved, maybe it was like one day or two days after I moved, and this girl messaged me like, Hi, I'm from the UK and now I'm studying here in Japan for a year. Do you want to meet up? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> like please. It was so crazy. She didn't have a profile picture and she had a private account and she was like, do you want to meet me at two today? And I was like, yeah. Like, and I just got, I just got ready with my phone mirror and I like ran off to Shinjuku and I met her for the first time and that was Emma. That's how I became friends with Emma. Yep, I could have actually been like killed, but how it be. I also met a few other people then. I met Alice and I met Yuyu. Yuyu lives in Singapore, but she was visiting Japan for like Kawaii International or whatever. So I met Yuyu a few times and then I met Naomi. Like I was just gradually like, I was kind of desperate. <laughs> to be honest, I was kind of desperate for friends. So I was, um, I was meeting a lot of like Instagrammers that I was friends with anyway. Anyway, back to like the first few days or so. I was really anxious about going out into public and doing things. For the first few days, I actually didn't eat because I was so anxious to have to like speak to the cashier. There's this whole thing about moving to a different country where you don't know the rules, you don't know the language very well. I, I knew such, such, such basic Japanese and I was really anxious about it. And actually, up until about a year, I barely spoke any Japanese just because of the anxiety of speaking Japanese. And nowadays, it's a lot easier for me. Like, I can order food, I can hold conversations, you know, I can speak it, right? But that took a long time to come out of me, it was really difficult for me, I think, because I'd really internalized this whole like, oh, if you speak Japanese, you're a weeb, but when you live in Japan, you have to speak Japanese because it's Japan, so I was like, Ooh. So yeah, I couldn't even go to the convenience store. I actually didn't eat for two days. Like, actually, actually didn't eat for two days. There's just something really scary about like moving to a completely foreign country, completely foreign in every way, shape, and form, and having to like suddenly assimilate. And, I am so glad I had the experience, but at the time it was terrifying. After this initial period of like just being generally completely panicked and having no idea what I'm doing and having no towels, it started to change into this whole like I went out like every day and I was just doing things constantly and I loved my language school teachers and I made really good friends with my language school class which I didn't expect because everyone there is so different from me. Everyone is like a completely different person. I really thought I would never make friends at my language school. When I first went there I actually panicked like friends and everyone's gonna hate me but no like I made really really good friends with my first class in my language school it's a shame because they're all gone now at the time language school was really easy because we were doing like the absolute absolute beginner stuff like hiragana and katakana that I already knew so I didn't have to study a lot at the time and I was just like going out all the time having so much fun but I remember what was really stressful was money because I didn't have like a job at the time. For the first month or so, I didn't work at all. Obviously I had savings, so I wasn't like dying, but there's something really stressful about like your savings going, like spending your savings, you know? Because for the past like three years, I was so used to saving money that actually just spending it and not saving it was making me crazy. I actually think I fell into a bit of a depression at that time. I mean, I do have depression, so I fall into depression like all the time, but I, I was having like a crisis because I was like, I don't have any goals now because my goal for three years was to move to Japan and then I didn't have any goals anymore. I was having like an identity crisis honestly because I was like well, what the fuck do I do now? It's really hard to explain because like surely I would be happy like I reached my goal I came to Japan right? You'd think that but it was kind of still really like overwhelming for me to not have anything to reach for anymore and that's kind of what I'd wanted when I came out I just wanted a year to just like enjoy myself and explore and not have to stress about money and this and that but that that had been my life for so long that I didn't know how to not be like that you know I don't know am I making sense so that was something that stressed me out for a while so that's why 
it was less than a month before I started teaching privately. But now I have like a regular job. By the way, I don't teach anymore. I work in the office of a teaching company. So I don't teach, I do like the office stuff. Anyway, my point is I didn't have a stable job and it was hectic. But I think it was November when I met Hirokazu. It's so crazy how much has changed and I can't believe I've almost known Hirokazu for like a year. So many things that I didn't think would be possible have happened. Like I didn't ever think that I was going to be able to stay past the year. I thought I was going to move back to Sweden and I absolutely didn't think I would be able to get my own apartment. By the way, share houses are like crazy. Like some people have really really good experiences in share houses but I lived in three share houses and only in the last share house did people even speak to me or like acknowledge my existence. I don't know if it's different in a women's only share house but I wasn't comfortable living with like strange men. I just, it just, I just wasn't. And at the same time it was really overwhelming for me to live with a bunch of strangers as an introvert. Like I mentioned I am a classic introvert and I lose energy so quickly being around other people and so it felt like I didn't really have my own space. I mean I did have my own room but there were like people around me constantly you know and it was like if I wanted to go to the bathroom I had to wait to make sure no one else was using the bathroom and things like that which I sound so privileged even talking about but now I live in this weeny little apartment and I can go to the bathroom naked anyway I enjoy the independence and I enjoy the life I've built and I enjoy the company that I have and I'm so glad I moved to Japan. It's changed my life for the better in every way, shape and form. Some tips if you move. First of all, a tip that I got from my sister is that when you move countries, because she moved to France for a year, when you move countries, the first three months, you're gonna be like, what the hell am I doing? Oh my God, I don't have any friends. Why did I do this? I regret this. And basically just stressing the whole time. So don't worry about it. You will, it's natural. Of course you will do that. So. I, I would say it was roughly the same for me and that's the advice that I give to people now. Wait three months to get used to the lifestyle and to make friends and generally just assimilate. My next tip is bring towels because you know what, I wasn't the only one who did that. I have a friend who recently moved too and I'm seeing her do so many things that I did and I'm just like, that was me. One of those things is that she didn't bring towels, yep. It's like, you know, you don't think about that, right? The next is to make sure you go out of your way to make friends, which sounds really obvious, but it's really easy to just stay inside your shell and be like panicking and stressed and like, I'm not gonna make any friends. But I'm so glad I made friends for in the first like month or so, because those friends are some of the ones that have stuck with me for the whole year, like Emma and Naomi, and I've had so many memories with them and I'm really, really glad. I did that. The next is one that I really struggled with for a while and that is don't be afraid to use the limited language you've got. Even if you think you sound stupid, as long as you're getting your point across, it doesn't matter. It's good practice and the people who went out of their way to speak Japanese even when they weren't sure are the people who progress faster than me. <laughs> but that's so much easier to say than it is to do, especially when you've got anxiety. But it's something to keep in mind. So yeah, that's it. A year. In Japan. Can't believe I went and did that. All in all, if you are considering going to study abroad for a year or six months or whatever, do it. Seriously, do it. Because when you're older, you're gonna have bills to pay, you're gonna have children to take care of. I don't know your life, but you know, you're gonna have a lot more responsibilities. And when you're young, it's so much easier to do things like travel abroad for a year because you don't have as many responsibilities in your home country. At least that was my experience. Um. Sorry about all the rambling. I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you've ever moved countries, please let me know what your experience was like when you first moved in the comments. Thank you, bye.